The problem of conserving the shroud is a relatively recent problem, in that in past centuries the problem itself was never faced in a rational and thorough manner. The shroud was kept folded for centuries and in many different ways. We know of at least two different types of folding. That which we can document best is obviously the manner in which it was folded at Chambéry in 1532, when the fire broke out that irrevocably disfigured it and left precise traces of how it was then folded on the cloth itself. Following this, for a number of centuries, it was kept rolled around a cylinder of wood, and this was how we found it, even during the last century, until, in 1992, Cardinal Giovanni Saldarini, then Archbishop of Turin, and as such the Shroud's papal custodian, raised the problem of how to improve and optimize the Shroud's conservation, obviously bearing in mind modern techniques and knowledge. He then named an international commission made up of scientists and experts, not just of the shroud, but also of the conservation of ancient fabrics, physics and chemistry, so that there would be complete advice covering a wide spectrum of all the various problems concerning such a valuable and ancient fabric. In 1996, we reached a conclusion, a final document, that was delivered into the hands of the papal custodian and, as a result, to the ownership of the shroud, which is the Holy See. And fundamentally, this contained certain advice. First of all, it was recommended that the shroud should no longer be kept rolled up, let alone folded, but rather spread out in a horizontal position. The second condition was that it no longer be kept in an ordinary atmosphere, because the oxygen present in the atmosphere causes the oxidation of the fabric's cellulose, and therefore its yellowing, as happens with any other length of linen or other fabrics. And here, the Commission recommended that it be conserved in an inert gas. Argon was the choice. Obviously, these two suggestions brought with them major practical and technical problems. One thing is to keep the shroud rolled up in a chest, like the one you can see behind me, therefore occupying a relatively small volume, as it had been since the beginning of the 17th century up to a few years ago. Another is to keep the sheet completely spread out, bearing in mind that it has a surface area of more than five square meters in a specially built airtight reliquary that must contain the argon in which the shroud must be kept. Uh, this is why, after appreciating this and getting the approval of the owners of the shroud, there began a difficult period searching for a means of constructing the reliquary in question. It was completed in time for the 1998 exposition, when pilgrims coming to worship the 1998 exposition were able to admire the shroud in its new reliquary. This was a reliquary that, in addition to guaranteeing the conservation conditions already mentioned, also guaranteed the maximum maximum security, in that the glass, as well as being 8 centimeters thick, was able to withstand the impact of very powerful instruments. However, the project was not over yet. There was still one problem that was not easy to solve. Uh, this was tied to the presence, which was documented by means of some partial split seams that happened during the placing of the shroud in its new reliquary, of carbon residues along its perimeter. It became apparent that under the perimeter patches there was a considerable amount of carbonized cellulose that obviously dated back to the fire in 1532. What happened was that at the end of the second exposition, that of 2000, at the moment when the shroud was transferred from the exposition reliquary to a second, lighter and more easy to handle reliquary, built shortly beforehand and suitable for normal conservation,
A report was written by the Commission relative to the hypothesis of unstitching the Holland cloth, a cloth that was very dirty and therefore much more polluted than the shroud itself and the patches from the shroud, and therefore the possibility of removing them definitively because they were no longer useful in the shroud's conservation. They were stitched on because the shroud, having to be rolled up, risked disintegrating because of this stress. Now, being conserved in an open state, these were of no further use. It was, therefore, decided to plan a definitive restoration work to complete this operation of improving the conditions of its conservation. Questa operazione di miglioramento delle condizioni di conservazione. Questo lavoro di restauro iniziò il 20 giugno del This restoration work began on the 20th of June 2002 and finished at the end of July the same year, having lasted almost a month. It was carried out by Mechtild Fluri Lemberg, one of the top experts in ancient fabric conservation at an international level, and, at that moment in time, the method of conserving the shroud was truly changed in a radical manner. When finished, the operation gave truly positive results. The shroud is now completely visible, no longer hidden by the ancient patches, and we have interesting material to study. The Holland cloth, the patches. I believe that now the situation of the shroud has had a certain and net improvement with respect to that in which it was before this decade-long complex operation to improve its conditions began. I hope that it will remain in optimum condition for the coming centuries.